Well, the current recovery in the U.S. economy may be short-lived. At least that's the warning flag being raised by our next guest. He is Doug Cass. He is a partner at Hedge Fund Seabreeze Partners, and he joins us now on the phone from his offices in Palm Beach, Florida, where I'm guessing, Doug, snow has not been a problem for you guys. No, it hasn't been. Good morning, Carol. Thanks for having me. It's, uh, it, was, it was under 40 degrees last night, though. All right. I'm not feeling too sorry for you. Hey, listen, let me ask you about the outlook. So the good news that we've gotten so far, just short-lived, how come in your view? I think as we end this year, there is a total absence of fear in the U.S. stock market. What seems easy for bullish investors to imagine today uh, might prove more difficult to deliver next year. And my warning is that we should be fearful that the current recovery domestically, especially in retail, mm -hmm. might be short-lived along with the rally in the market. I suspect some important portion of the recovery is simply recession fatigue. And um, it's interesting to note, I do this uh, surprise list on the street.com every year, which I right. just completed. There is a universally optimistic and very tightly grouped consensus forecast. Um, I think it's going to prove ephemeral. Uh, I believe that the foundation for the growth is far less robust than it appears. I have to tell you, I've read your list, the 15 surprises to watch for 2011. I love it. And there's just one interesting thing after another. A couple of things you bring up. You blame partisan politics for cutting into business and consumer confidence and economic growth in the last half of 2011. I mean, what is it, uh, Doug? They just kind of can't get anything done? I think that um, there was some concessions by both the Republicans and Democrats, Carol, uh, uh, in an attempt to um, uh, uh, extend employment benefits on one hand, mm -hmm. pro the Democrats obviously wanted, and the Republicans wanted extension of the tax cuts, particularly for the wealthy. And I think as we move towards the middle of 2011, within a year and a quarter or so of the 2012, uh, presidential election. Uh, partisan politics will take shape. And we have to remember that um, the real, the real um, uh, thing that's taken the stock market up has been an explosion in profits and surprisingly strong profit margins. Right, right. But it is, um, it is what I call screwflation. I've mentioned this with Tom on many occasions, Tom mm -hmm. Keene. Right. Um, screwflation, that's screw what you call Screwflation is kind of a distance distant cousin to stagflation, which occurred in the 1980s, and means that the middle class, the average American Joe, has been victimized by uh, an erosion in real disposable incomes, wage deflation, and increasingly higher costs. Mm -hmm. So I think there's going to be a, a revolt in 2011, and I suggest, in fact, one of my surprises is that a third party, much more successful and higher profile than the Tea Party uh, takes uh, form sometime mid-year. Does that include Sarah Palin making it uh, a long way? What do you think? I think Sarah Palin is going to be seen as a flash in the, pa in the pants. And um, I think that um, the American Party, uh, the emergence of a third party, will be much more of a, a centrist party appealing to both Republicans and Democrats. And I think the first one that's going to accept the party will be Joe Lieberman, the junior senator in Connecticut. Doug, and what, then I think you'll get some con outlier con uh, right. Congress people. Well, the other thing on, on a political basis that caught my attention on your surprises is, is that you say Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden actually switch places. Do you really think this could play out here? I certainly do. Um, there are a lot of reasons to expect it. Um, we all know that Obama has been weakened seriously mm -hmm. on a political basis. And the situation could get worse if I'm correct that we see a sustained level of unemployment and a still quiescent housing market. Um, so I think it would force the administration to consider some radical changes in order to survive the election in 2012. Right. We have to remember that Hillary Clinton um, uh, is a ruthless and a relentless campaigner. She could be far more effective mm -hmm. as a drawer of voters than Biden. She could wipe out Palin from the face of the earth. And we believe that she still harbors dreams of the White House. Right. So she would immediately become the overwhelming favorite um, to garner the uh, presidential, uh, the Democratic Party's presidential nomination it's an, out it's in 2016. Definitely a provocative idea. I want to go back to the markets for a moment because I know I'm running out of time here. You are worried about those commodity prices. You say rising commodity prices becomes the single greatest concern for the U.S. stock market and economy. On the other hand, one commodity, gold, which has been on a tear for almost the last decade, 
You see it plummeting by more than $250 and being among the worst asset classes of the new year. What happens to gold? Well, I see gold uh, exhibiting uh, a great deal of um, uh, volatility in the coming year. And um, it, is, it has become really the most favored asset class by hot money, by hedge funds. And my surprise next year is that the price of gold has the potential to become the modern-day equivalent of Hans Christian Andersen's hmm. The Emperor's New Clothes. Mm -hmm. You know, you think about it, gold is, 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 almost, is almost like religion. No one can prove that God exists or that God doesn't exist. Right, right. You're, either, you're either an atheist or you're, convinced, or you're a believer. Right. And it's the same, that's, same true with gold. Either you're a believer or you're not. And there are factors, I think, that are going to contribute importantly to a reduction in gold prices. The most important with right. is uh, an, interest, uh, an increase in real interest rates. An interest in rates. Hey, got about 30 seconds here. One corporate thing that caught my attention, and you said among the most notable takeover deals in 2011, and we've definitely seen takeover deals uh, pick up this year, you say Microsoft launches a tender offer for Yahoo at 21.50 a share. So you see that playing out here? Yeah, I do. Um, Microsoft is hemorrhaging cash in its internet operations. They're losing two and a half billion dollars on a, twirling, a trailing 12-month basis. Yahoo will immediately contribute a billion and a half to that uh, negative cash flow. Mm. Yahoo has three and a half billion dollars of cash. They have public holdings, nearly $10 billion in Alibaba.com and Yahoo Japan. And then they have another $6 billion in private holdings, so I think it makes a great deal of sense. Remember, Microsoft back in February 2008 offered $31 a share of $45 billion to acquire Yahoo. All right, listen, this is an interesting read, and there's a couple of other surprises I couldn't get to, um, but everybody should definitely uh, check it out. Doug, thank you so much. Really thank you so much time. for having me.